I've been at the Field Museum for 15 years. I started off as a fossil preparator, and then I transitioned over to collection manager of meteorites and physical geology. I'm the Rove family curator of evolutionary biology here at the Field Museum. And over the last 12 years, I've been studying uh, Triassic marine reptiles. In 1998, we had a National Geographic grant to go out to the Augusta Mountains in northwestern Nevada. So there were three of us on the expeditions, myself, Olivier Rico, our curator of fossil reptiles, and Martin Sander from the University of Bonn. When we prospect for fossils, we have to do a lot of hiking. So it's a very tiring process. It's hot there. It's a mountain desert. Towards the end of the trip, we were all hot, dirty, and frustrated and we stumbled upon some teeth that were weathering out of the side of the hill and these teeth ended up being something really unusual. It's serendipitous who falls upon a fossil, you know, some crew member will. And it's just a habit of paleontologists to dub the find according to the name of the person who found the actual fossil and in this case it was Jim. It's flattering uh, having something named after you of course, uh, especially something as significant as this animal. Ichthyosaurs are these fairly well-known marine reptiles. They're not dinosaurs, but their closest living relatives are monitor lizards. This particular ichthyosaur is a very rare find. Salato Ahon means the ruler of the sea because it is a top predator of the sea at the time it lived. And Saurus falcis means it ate other reptiles. Uh, this find, this particular find, is one of the large ichthyosaurs. And not only that, it has also these uh, teeth with these cutting edges. This particular one is curved a little bit, but it also has a cutting surface on it. And this allowed it to attack animals as large, if not larger, than itself. So that makes that particular ichthyosaur the top predator of its time in that particular area of, the, of that Triassic Sea where it lived. Two important findings came out of the discovery of this ichthyosaur. One is that it's a new species, and the other is it gives us a better understanding about complex ecosystems and how they recover after extinction events. This animal lived in the early Triassic about 244 million years ago, and that was 8 million years after the Permian-Triassic event, which was the largest mass extinction event known from our fossil record. This is a very fast evolutionary event and a very fast process that led to the reconstitution of a complete food chain, inclusive of a top predator. That's a mature ecosystem, eight million years after the mass extinction. The interest in all of this work is to find, hopefully, some rules and some regularities as to how such ecosystems re-evolve and reconstitute themselves. And that you could potentially use as insights for how to manage the current biodiversity crisis that we are experiencing today.